Okay, I built this jewelry box last summer and got a lot of positive response. I made a little video of the one of them. Posted it on Facebook and got a lot of positive response there as well. So I'm just going to go through the layout and design of this. And I'm going to cut this into two videos. This first video will be the, uh, the layout and the design. And I'm working in VCarve Pro. Now any of these Vectric programs because there's really no 3d components on this one so if you got desktop aspire any of them uh, shouldn't be an issue if you're not with vectric if you got a different program you can still take the design and run with it and uh, anyway so I'm gonna open a new file and I'm gonna make it 15 inches wide by eight inches high and one inch thick. It's double sided. And uh, we're working in inches. Z zero off the top, datum from center. And we're gonna hit okay. Now all these, there's gonna be the base. Uh, whether you choose to Go two, three, four, whatever, how many uh, swinging doors you want to build. Drawers. Um, the top, the lid, everything is going to be indexed. So, um, I'm going to go 0.325. Because I use 516 dowels. So, uh, I'll, I'll put one there. I'm going to mirror this. We're going to move it around. I'm going to flip it horizontal. Put one over here. Because we're flipping about job center. And we're creating a mirrored object. I'm going to flip it vertical down. Flip it horizontal again. So this will, this uh, alignment pattern will go into your spoil board. And every layer or every uh, component you build. If you're going to do the bottom. Do some machining on the bottom. You're going to want to use this uh, this pattern. So we're going to need to start with a square, and we're going to start with 13 wide by seven inches high. Uh, we're going to put an external radius of one inch, uh, sorry, half inch, 0.5, one inch circle, and just a little above center here. We'll create our square. And uh, this will be on the back side, and the hinge will be right here. And uh, like as you've seen in the video, the, the drawers swing out from here out. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna round off this front corner a little more. So I'm thinking a two inch radius, so a four inch circle. Let's start with that. Okay, so this circle is selected. We'll hold the shift key down. Select this vector, and we're going to go to this align. We're going to align left. As you see, we've got a perfect alignment. Then we're going to go back and align to bottom. Now our circle vectors are touching our, our square vectors perfectly here. They're nice and tight. We're going to trim. Get rid of this portion of this vector, this portion of this vector. I'm only working on one side. We'll cut this on half and mirror it so that both sides are equal. They're symmetrical the same. So we're gonna add a little curve here and a little curve in the front. So we're gonna go into node editing, select this vector. And uh, as you can see here in the center, our little cursor turns square on any of these um, marks. So just above it, we're gonna right click and we're gonna, we got this, we can use the B key as a shortcut, Bezier. This allows us to modify this vector in a smooth, even curve. And you, you, you can do a lot of things in here, but we're just looking for a smooth, even curve. Just curve it out a little bit, just give it a little bit of shape. Oh, that's too much. That should be all right. 
And then same here, we're going to right click, Bezier, and we'll curve this down a wee bit. That should be pretty good. So now our jewelry box will have a little bit of curve on the sides and in the front. While we're in node editing, we're going to hover our cursor over center here and hit the C key for cut. And uh, let's see here, vector cut is C. So you can do either right click it or just hit the shortcut key. Now we'll go back to selection mode. We're going to have a hinge here. And I have got some 8 millimeter carbon fiber rod, which I measured out to be 0.315 inches on my caliper. And as you can see, when we get close to this radius, this snaps to center of that radius. That's what we're looking for right there. So we'll close this out. We'll highlight this half of this vector. We'll delete it. We'll select this vector and this hinge pin. We're going to go into mirror our objects. We're going to flip it horizontal about job center with a mirrored copy. So this outer vector will be our profile vector for all the layers of our box. And uh, on the first couple I did, I left it like this, but then uh, I'll show you another drawing I got. Gives a little wider footprint as, a, as you see in the video. Uh, I uh, I simply copied and pasted the base to another uh, another new project and made it out of a 10 inch, a little wider, a little bigger, and just it just looks a little nicer. So anyway, with this hinge pin hole and this vector selector, we're going to hit our shift key, select these. Actually, we'll just hit Control A because we want to select. Our alignment holes as well. We're going to join our vectors. Oh, did that wrong. Anyway, I'm going to hit Control A to select them all. We're going to right click here. We're going to copy to another layer. We're going to go to a new layer. We'll call layer two drawer. We'll change its color so it's not all the same. We're going to copy to a layer another one. We'll call this one the top. We'll hit OK. Oh, I should have changed color on that. That's fine. And we're going to copy another layer. And we're going to call this new layer the lid. Change the color here again. So now we have four layers. The first layer we're going to rename base. So we're going to go down here to rename. And that's good there. So I didn't recolor this one. If we hit on the screen here this gives us our color pattern we can change our colors here so the lid is highlighted here and you see it says lid here that's if we draw anything here that's the layer it's going to go to we can shut off any of these layers so right now our drawer layer is visible and this is actually the layer we're going to start working on first. So we want to make sure we're on the right layer. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, our hinge. It's going to come around here and then over. So we're going to create a circle, one inch. So we're going to snap the center here. And that matches up with our half inch radius on our, uh, our other components. We're going to close this out. 
we're gonna uh, we're gonna need some uh, spacers to go between the base and the top. So we're gonna lay them out here, and then we'll move them to another layer. I need a square that is square. It will be this is thirteen. Uh, let's go ten. It gives us an inch and a half on each end. And we're using one inch material. This will be a board standing on end. So we'll close this. This vector is selected. We're going to hold the shift key down. Select the outer vector. And we're going to shift this to align object to the top of the selected object. Okay, now we need another piece of the spacer here you might have seen in the uh, video. So we're going to go back to our square tool. We're going to go one inch wide so the one inch board is on edge by, let's try five inches. Snap to center here. Yeah, I think that'd be okay. I was thinking of going five and a half, but I think that'll be okay. This vector is selected. We're going to shift and hold it to this vector. And then now these align things on the inside. These align things on the outside. We want to align this vector tightly to this vector on the outside. So we're going to choose this key. As you can see, it's nice and tight here. So, as I said before, we're going to... This time we're not going to uh, copy, we're going to move to a layer. We're going to go new layer. We'll put spacers here. And we'll choose another color. Okay, now I can go in here and turn that off. But for the moment I need that for working. So we're going to continue on and build our uh, our drawer, our swinging drawers. So we're going to come around here with a nice curve. So we're going to go back to the circle tool, one inch. Uh, it says how, yeah, that should be perfect right there. And then, uh, oh, sorry, I need more circles. I'm going to put another one over here. So here again, this is selected. We'll select this vector. And we're going to align to the top of the outer vector. We'll select this vector, shift key, select this vector. We're going to align to the right. Okay, so now these are nice and tight. And when our drawer closes, I'll show you here in a minute, this is going to line up perfectly again. So we're going to copy and paste one more. And this one, we're just going to use the arrow key. And we want it in line with this edge, but just touching this vector down here. Now I found that when we're aligning objects on a curve like this, the vector has been modified. It's hard to use these tabs, the alignment, align object tabs, because it just don't seem to quite know what I want to do. So anyway, we're going to hit our F key to center this. We'll go back up here. We'll shut off our spacers. Now we're going to draw the rest of the drawer with the line drawing tool. So we'll snap to the uh, the bottom center of this circle here, top center of this one here. Click that, spacer bar. Same here, we're going to snap to this outer edge here, down to this outer edge here. Snap that. Now we're going to go out of the line tool so we can right click here. That gets us out of the line tool and finishes our line. Now you can kind of see the shape of the drawer that was in the video. 
We're going to use our interactive trim tool. Going to trim this here, this here, this here, here, and this one here. Oh, it don't want to work. Well, no worries. We'll just go back to node editing. Select this vector. We're going to cut it here with our C key. We'll cut it here. This is highlighted. We can hit our delete key. There you can see, hit the F key, center. We have the majority of our drawer now. Now, once again, I'm going to draw one and then flip it about center. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of this vector as well. And I got to get rid of this by highlighting it and hitting the delete key. So we're going to select this, delete, because when we flip it, we'll we'll take this hinge pin here with us. So to make our pocket in here, we're going to need an offset. To get our offset correct, we're going to run a line. Select our line tool. Snap to the bottom. You see it'll still snap to. Uh, where the bottom center of that circle was, snap to that, straight over to here, right click, right out of there. For the time being, we're still going to need to uh, cut this vector. So I can make this one vector for the purposes of offsetting. I'm going to go to node editing, select the main vector. Hit the C key here. And the C key right where this joins. To cut those vectors. Okay, now we're going to be able to join up these vectors. So we'll go to selection mode. Join our vectors. We're going to select all the vectors we want joined up here. We have three open vectors. When we're done, we'll have one. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and uh, make our inner vector. So we're going to go to offset vector. We're going to offset inward half an inch. Here's our pocket vector. We'll close this out. We're going to go into the fillet tool here. And uh, quarter inch radius, because I'm going to uh, machine this out with a half inch ball nose. will give us a nice radius in the bottom. So we're going to go to the corners. And when the little check mark appears, we're going to radius them off. So now we have our inner vector, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this line here. So we're going to go back to node editing. Hover our cursor there, hit our C key to cut. C key to cut. This is still selected. We hit our delete key. Now in selection mode, we're going to select all the vectors around this uh, profile. Oh, I'm holding the wrong key down here, sorry. Now we're going to join these vectors. So now we have a complete drawer. So we're going to select all of this and the hinge. We're going to go into our mirror objects. Flip it horizontal. And there you see we have our two drawers. Now, in the base of this jewelry box, I pocketed out these in the base as well. These pockets in the base, because when the drawers are open, you can reach inside and you can still use that little bit of space in the bottom for storage as well. So we'll right click here. We're going to copy to layer base. Okay, so now when we go up here and turn our base on, we'll turn off drawers. 
you can see we have these pockets that we can uh, utilize this space. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn on our spacers. While we're here, I'm going to turn on the base up here. Because what I'm drawing now, I want to go to base. What we're going to draw now is some alignment pinholes. 0.325516. Because uh, when we go to assemble all of this, we got to get the base, these spacers, and the top section all lined up. So we get a nice straight square fit up. With this, so we're going to select this circle down. We'll hold our shift key down and select our square, which is our back spacer. And we're going to uh, center it in the selected object. We'll select this circle, which will be our dowel pinhole. We're going to flip it about center horizontally. So now when we go to assemble it, we'll have our dowel pinholes in all of our pieces here. We're going to copy these, pull our shift key down, going to copy the layer spacer, and we're also going to copy the layer top. So we'll be able to drill these out on the CNC in the base, the bottom of the top, and these spacers, top and bottom. Dowel them up, glue them all up, everything will fit up nice. Nice and square and straight. We're going to go ahead and turn drawers on here. And um, we can select our vectors here. Click on it again. On the center, on our pivot, you can move this pivot. If we, the double circle there, when you click on that, move it over here. Now these handles here, you got your sizing handles, but you also have these blue handles. You can see here how your drawers are going to work with our pivot over in the center where our carbon fiber is going to be. So just to make sure we're square, I'm going to hit Control Z. You can do that on both sides if you like. Click on the center, move our pivot down to the center of our hinge, grab the handle, So that's a, that's a handy uh, handy little tool to have. We'll control Z to make sure everything's back to where it was. Okay, so now our drawers and our base and our spacers are all done. We're going to shut off our spacers, shut off our drawers, shut off our base. We're going to turn on the top. We're going to work on the top now. Now, when we uh, copy these to the top, this is the top looking down. We want these alignment holes and the hinge pins on the bottom. We're going to select them all. Pull in our shift key down. Ah, almost made a mistake here. We're working on the base. We want to work on the top. It's a common... If you're on a different layer, it'll be red there. That's you got to make sure where you are. Once again, we're going to select these. Shift key. Select these. And we're going to we're going to move to the other side. We don't want those on the uh, on the top side at all of the top. Now the top I got a piece of 2 inch by eight inches, full, full four quarters maple. I'm going to make this out of maple. So uh, when we go to run our tool paths, 
Everything else is designed on a one inch. We're going to just modify our tool path for this one, um, this one portion of the, the jewelry box. Uh, we're going to go ahead and now select the outer vector. We're going to go back into offset. It's already set to half inch, so we're going to offset inward. We'll close this out. We've got square corners here. We'll use our uh, fillet tool. We'll use the radius M inward. We're going to use the same half inch tool as we do on the pockets below. So now we're going to uh, create, I'm going to use these sauce hinges. They're an invisible hinge. So I went ahead and opened up on their web page. They're the size 100 sauce hinges. It's always a good idea to read all these notes. There may be some information. But uh, our minimum material thickness is half an inch. Uh, I've used these before. I already knew that. But anyway, it's a point. Uh, half inch. Not drawn to scale. The main thing we want to know is we're going to make this oval that this recesses into. It's one inch by three eighths of an inch. So we're going to make two ovals. And also, as you can kind of see here, this little bottom sticks down. It's a three eighths circle, just a three eighths hole. So we're going to have our oval, which is 15, 30, uh, four, sorry, 15 64ths, just under a quarter of an inch. And our overall depth is 15 30 seconds, just under half an inch. So we're going to go ahead and make our ovals, our circles for our, our, uh, our holes for the bottom of the hinge, and our screw holes are 5 eighths of an inch apart. So we're going to go back to our drawing. We're going to go into our square object. Draw a rectangle. We're going to radius a half of 3 eighths is 3 16. So let's go point 185. Oh, not point point. I know 3 is 188, but that's close enough. Width is 1 inch. Height will be point 375. should be good there and there we have our oval for our hinge we're gonna make a 3 8 375 circle centered to our oval for our tool path on our hinge opening. So now we need screw holes. Uh, we can go point one. We'll put this point one circle center here. Close this out. And we'll move this over. Our bolt pattern is 5 eighths. So we'll move this 5 sixteenths. Uh, 5 sixteenths is point three one two five it's half a point six two five so we'll copy this paste this and we'll move our pasted copy minus point six two five right apply that there we have our uh, all our vectors needed for our hinge now, if you decide to put a regular box hinge or something here, it might be easier. But I, I like these particular hinges myself. So. And they're readily available. I just got to go to Edmonton here and pick them up. So, uh, anyway, so this, 
this is complete. We got our uh, one inch by three eighths for the top portion of the hinge. Got our three eighths for the little bottom stub of the hinge and our bolt patterns. We'll flip this about center, uh, horizontally. And that is our holes for our hinges. Now we can copy this to the lid. But with our indexing holes here, we can run this tool path in our piece of two inch. And then we can put our lid with, we'll put our lid on, put our index holes in it, line it up, put it on upside down, and run this same tool path. We don't need to run uh, another, build another tool path for the lid. It's the same, it's gonna be inverted. So put the lid on upside down. And then when you go to your lid, it, it uh, this is this will be the top. So you do the bottom first with the hinges. Then on the top, you can decorate this any way you see fit. Whether you want to carve an image in here from, from clip art, do an inlay, uh, v-carve a message for somebody whatever you like so if we duplicate as many of these tool paths as we can uh, it just saves a lot of time and it makes sense so we can go to our tool path and uh, we can turn our drawer on as we can see these tool paths are identical we only have to create it once. Now for these uh, hinges, in the bottom and top, we don't want to go all the way through. And on our swinging drawers, we want this maybe two thou bigger. So there's room uh, on the pin for the, the hinge to swing. Because in the base and the top, we want the ends of this piece of carbon fiber shaft or rod, or if you choose dowel, whatever you choose. I'm, I'm going to use carbon fiber. We want it snug into the base and underneath the top. And on the drawer is a little bigger. So when we're creating all these tool paths, uh, you can, uh, like I say, try and match up as much as you can. And I'm not going to go through all the tool paths because everyone will have a different idea here. The The whole object of this video is uh, uh, show you how I designed it. Give you some ideas maybe you can run with. And uh, I'll go ahead and create some of these tool paths or all these tool paths. And then uh, maybe next week here I'll have... Uh, I'll have everything I need to put together the video on the machine and this on the CNC. It's already getting to where this video is getting a little lengthy, so we'll cut it short here. And uh, I'll go over a little bit of, of the tool pathing I did during the machining video. But uh, yeah, just try and think of however many different layers you got your base, your drawers, your top, and your lid. And this outer profile is the same for the base, the top, and the lid. Unless, like I said earlier, I made the base a little different here. So I'm going to close this out. And I'm going to uh, show you the base I made for the other jewelry boxes. So I call that file the big base. As you can see, I just copied from the uh, the base on the the main box drawing onto a bigger piece here. It's 16 by 10, a little bigger, a little more room. So I could put a now I put an ogie around here. It makes it look a little nicer on the bottom. I got those one inch felt uh, bumper pads. So I just recessed this out about uh, 50 thou or so. Just so uh, the little felt bumper pads can go in there. 
and it just made it a little more attractive. So on our on our box that we're drawing out here, a few other things you want to note is uh, I I it's like I said I got an eight millimeter carbon fiber here. I went on eBay, I believe it was, and got some nylon flat washers. I think you can also get them at Home Depot or uh, maybe Lowe's. Just a little bit of space between the base and the drawer and then between the drawers so that they don't rub together. And uh, I'll get everything together I need. I got almost everything here, but uh, I don't have quite everything. And I'll be in Edmonton here tomorrow, I believe, and I'll get uh, what I need. And uh, I'll start working on the video, and I'll make another one of these jewelry boxes. And make a great Christmas gift here. We've got just uh, a few weeks left here to go, and uh, maybe this will be a nice surprise for someone or whatever. But, uh, yeah, use your imagination if you want to expand on this or do it a little different. Create creativity is the name of the game here, and uh, it's a real nice, attractive product when you're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down because it's getting pretty long already, and then I'll come back with part two. And if you want to watch the machining, and like I said, I'll bring up some of the highlights of how I tool pass some of these, and you can choose to do do it that way. Or your own way and uh, we'll go from there thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you all later